Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Let me ask you a question. So you have a business. You have a website. Of course you have a website. Is your website doing anything for you? Is it, is it really producing results for you? Well, I want you to grab a pen and a, and a yellow pad and listen to our next guest, Tom Young from Intuitive Websites. We're going to talk about how you can get your website working for you. We're going to talk about his new book, Winning the Website War, and uh, we're going to get a lot of great ideas from Tom. So, Tom, thanks very much for joining us, and welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, Tom. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's an interesting topic. Everybody has a website. Of course, our listeners are age 50-plus business owners, and they may not be up on is there you know on, on what their website should be doing with them so tell us a little bit about your background and how you started intuitive websites oh sure yeah i basically came out of the sales and marketing world and uh decided when i was in my mba program that i wanted to have my own business and i started off as a consultant in the late 90s just as the internet was starting to to come about and people really didn't know what the Internet was going to do back then and, and how it was going to be used. They just knew it was real important. And I kind of jumped on board early and realized that the Internet really is a content resource for people. And I started putting a lot of content out on the Internet. Next thing you knew, I was growing a consulting business. And that consulting business grew to where we now have uh, basically a, what's called a digital marketing agency now where we do uh, website development, design, and marketing, and, and also do website strategy with, with our clients. And um, that philosophy that I had from the late 90s is still more important than ever. In fact, probably is now the central driving force behind web marketing. And, and, and you know, as I was listening to your introduction and I think about the business owner who's 50-plus and I think about them, you know, thinking about exiting their business or whatever, what more important thing can they leave for their company than a website that is producing strong results for their company, for their brand, under their domain name, for their sales and marketing team? That in itself is a very, very valuable component of a business. And when, when that business changes hands, you can bet for sure the new owners are going to be looking at that website thinking, what kind of rankings does it have? How well is it producing? What's the history of the site? And when I buy this business, is that going to be an asset for me, and, and can I grow on it and, and, and even do better things with it? So I think it's a very appropriate topic for your, for your show and for your listeners. I can't agree more. I think that a lot of people um, kind of might, might still discount the value of their website, but others are saying we're starting to get more and more traffic on our website and more and more customers from our website. And I think a lot of people don't realize the importance of being able to tell a potential buyer that you have a, uh, a, a great uh, site that works and that brings in customers. What a valuable thing to be able to, to uh, uh, turn over to somebody as your intellectual property. So what are some of the, the ways that people win the website war? What are some of the uh, uh, tips and ideas that you can give our listeners, uh, and what are some of the mistakes that you see? Let's let's do both of those if you can. Sure, absolutely. Well, winning the website war really deals with two issues that that the the business owner has to to overcome. And one is how do I beat my competitors? How do I show up ahead of competitors in Google searches? And how do I have a website that's more compelling than my competitor sites so that people will contact my business or purchase uh, from my website or contact my sales team? So how do I beat competitors? That's the first front of the website war. The second front is how do I get a team to do these things that have to get done? Website marketing is very unique in that it relies on very different sets of, of expertise and disciplines. And in, and in many cases, these disciplines um, don't complement each other because you're asking technology people to work with designers. You're asking designers to work with marketing people. You're asking uh, designers to also work with content people and so forth. And so the business leader and the, and the, the marketing business leader has to find ways to bring this team together. That's why, that's why I called the book Winning the Website War, because these are the challenges that, that the business owner has. And what you mentioned earlier, the idea that people are now starting to see that a website's important, um, a lot of business owners still see their, their website as kind of an invisible salesperson <laughs> that's out there, and, and occasionally they'll see some results, but for the most part, it happens you know, in, in this kind of silent vacuum. 
And that is not the case whatsoever. Websites, on average, for successful businesses, websites will have hundreds of visitors a month, if not thousands of visitors a month for the typical small or average size company. That's a lot of people that are being exposed to your brand. And so websites are anything but silent. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that business owners make is that idea of, well, yeah, we have a website. It's out there. It's working for us. Um, occasionally we see something, but, you know, I really don't give it much attention. Well, if they're not going to give it attention, their competitors will. And then once again, if you're building a business that's sellable or bu- building a business that has value to it, working on that website is going to increase the value, no question. Absolutely. Um, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, they, they spend a lot of money in a lot of different ways for marketing businesses do. And could you comment uh, as far as the, the trend? Let's say you see a pie chart with a sliver on it, and that represents website sales, and maybe that's 10 years old. And, and what that pie chart looks like now for a lot of business owners, especially those that you've worked with? Um, because, I, I, again, I commented earlier, uh, uh, YouTube uh, is just on the news today. is 10 years old today, so it's only been around for 10 years. Mm-hmm. But, but how much different do pie charts look today when they're representing, representing website sales and activity than they did just a few years ago? Well, there's, two parts, there's a two-part answer to that question. One is the idea that you can create that pie chart. I mean, if you put the effort into your site and grow the traffic, then you will see more leads coming from your site. You'll see a higher percentage of marketing return coming from the site. If you ignore your website, then you won't. But, yes, obviously we've seen huge increase in, uh, increases in the amount of, of leads and sales coming from the web. Um, we've also seen uh, fewer people wanting to make contact initially with the company until they've properly evaluated you online. And if they can't do that through your website and through your content, they're going to go somewhere where they can evaluate you. In fact, the biggest trend in marketing that's been caused by the Internet by far is the idea that people will find you. People want to research and find you. They don't want to be sold to. They don't want you to call and leave voicemails for them or, or bug them at their office. They want to go to Google, do the search, talk to a couple people, maybe get a reference or see a review, and then they want to contact you, and they want to feel like, yes, you're the right company for what I need. And that is what a website's going to be the central part of, is making sure people find you. And in fact, um, the book, Winning the Website War, talks about four steps to marketing success. And those four steps are really the key for the business owner to understand before they can launch any kind of successful website. And, that, and the first step is strategy, which is really understanding why you have a website, why your business is success- successful, and how you translate what is successful about your business offline to the web. And I spend a lot of time talking to CEOs, and a CEO can tell me in about 30 seconds the importance of their company and the value they bring, and I get it immediately. But then we go look at their website, and we're confused. We can't make sense of it. Uh, We don't understand what the taglines are or where to navigate to on the site. The first part is getting the strategy in place so your website communicates properly to target market. Once that's in place, then you move to step two, which is design and development, which is implementation of that strategy. And then step three is traffic generation, which a lot of people put that first. (laughs) That really needs to be after you have the other two steps in place. And then step four is the process of monitoring the results and working with your sales people and your marketing team so your website is not an invisible salesperson, but actually an active member of of your marketing team and an active tool. And I think one of the key things that, that business leaders need to do, they can start this week, is schedule regular web marketing meetings with your team. Bring them together, ask them questions about the data on the site, and so forth. I've seen that as as a great step forward because it forces folks, especially business leaders, to really learn what is happening with their website. For example, in your meeting, review your website stats. Go to Google Analytics, set up an account, and then review the stats every week or every month and ask questions about the stats. Why is this number increasing? Why is this number decreasing? As you start to do that, then then the business leader becomes a web marketer or at least understands web marketing and then can provide direction for for the team. Um, And and we found those are critical. And and the book has a very clear 
um, outline of the four steps. Every chapter has action items in it so you can you know, understand how to get these, these meetings going and how to get the team moving in the right direction. So great idea. I mean, uh, as far as uh, adding your your website into in, or your your web presence into a meeting agenda and taking a look at that, that that also gives employees an opportunity to participate and feel like they're being heard, and they may have much better sure. ideas than than you might come up with. And uh, it seems like uh, that that would make a lot of sense. How important is uh, anticipating what? Uh, consumer might be asking and having a robust, frequently asked questions section on a website? Well, I, I think that, that one of the things that you, you mentioned earlier, you know, what are some things that people don't do and, and what are the mistakes they make, is they don't talk enough to their target market to find out why and how people use their website. The most common thing that I hear is what I call the sample size of one dilemma, which is basically that the business leader will say, well, this is how I use websites. So let's make our website that way. And it can even happen in a team. The team will say, this is how our company uses this website and should design it, so let's do it that way. And then you can alienate your target market. So there's two very important things to do. One is talk to your target market. Find out from them. Would a frequently asked questions section be important to you? If so, give me the list of the questions. Have the market give you the list of the questions, not the, not the, the business team, right? And then second thing, as I mentioned before, you have to watch the website stats. In fact, um, just this week, Google had a major change in how they rank mobile websites because mobile is really huge. About half the, half the searches on the Internet right now take place on mobile phones, which is kind of mind-boggling when you think about it, but it's, it's, it's the truth. And so what Google is requiring people to do more and more is to use the data that they have to do your web marketing, which would include Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools. Now, these are two things that every business owner needs to know about. There's no excuse for not knowing it anymore. And if you don't understand these tools and what they do, it will hurt the value of your company. There's no question because your competitors will know these things. Um, so just, I mean, kind of a long answer to your question, but, but I, I think ultimately what I want business leaders to know is that if they don't understand web marketing, there's not as much value in their company. And that's really the bottom line. Now, I don't want business leaders to feel overwhelmed by this. They don't have to know every detail, but they need to know what's covered in the four steps, and they need to know the current trends of mobile and how people find you and that sort of thing. Yeah, and a lot of this stuff has changed so rapidly over the last few years. So I think a lot of our, uh, again, a lot of our listeners might be thinking, well, you know, it, it used to, I used to set up the website and that I'd refresh it every two or three years isn't that enough, and I know it's not enough anymore. But here's a question that a lot of people are starting to wonder is, uh, I know why somebody would come to your one website once, because they're curious to find out about you, what would bring them back? So what are some ideas for having campaigns that bring people back to the website and, and some ideas of what content to put onto a website that would make it interesting to revisit? It's a great question, and you know, I mentioned earlier that one of the biggest trends that the Internet has caused is this idea of people wanting to find you. They want to research you and not be sold. That's a huge trend. The second huge trend is the loyal following, okay? And this is the idea that people want to attach themselves to brands that they know and trust because then the clutter and busyness of the Internet doesn't interfere with their life anymore. And that applies to every business, no matter how large or small or no matter what segment you're in. So you have to be thinking about your loyal followers, why they selected to do business with you, why they're following you, and why they're buying your products and services, and then build that loyal base through email marketing, which is still very effective, especially to a loyal following, and with, uh, with, with social media posting, blog postings, regular content update, updates, and then all the things you do offline uh, are still important, too, with this loyal following. And those folks will refer people to you, and they will keep coming back as customers. So content really is, number one, for this loyal following to reinforce what they're doing and to find others like them. Um, and then, you know, once you start working with content on your loyal following, there's many other uses of that. For example, Google loves fresh content that's relevant to a market segment. So I would say that when you think about writing content, when you think about bringing people in, think about the content that appeals to your customers the most, 
and continue to do monthly email marketing. Um, a lot of people come to me and say, you know, we don't want to do email marketing. We don't want to be seen as spammers. And I just turn that on its head and say, well, that's not the case at all. Hey, if your emails are important and, and of value, people wait for those emails. They subscribe to that list, and they share it with people. So that's the category you have to be in with, with content as well. Mm-hmm. Is, is continually yeah. coming up with fresh content. And, and that's a challenge for a lot of people. So they need to have people that they work with who specialize in that type of thing. Now, intuitive websites, Absolutely. you work soup to nuts with people that say, you know, my websites, I mean, it's just a mess or I need to get, I need to get with it here. Do you come in and work with people uh, to help them uh, create an effective website and campaign? Absolutely. We, we follow the four-step process where we first sit down and discuss strategy and get that right. And then if we design and develop a new site or modify a current site, we make sure that, that it, it's the implementation of that strategy. And then we do SEO and content, and we do all the things needed to bring in traffic. And then we really push step four, which is the idea of let's measure the return on this site. Let's see how well it's doing. Let's see what leads come in every month or sales come in, and let's see what the ROI is like. Um, we work and we work really hard on on improving conversion rates on websites because we want if a hundred people visit a site, we want as many as possible to convert. Um, and then we can track those conversions down to sales so that you know the smart business leader can actually see their ROI on what we're doing. And it's usually pretty good. Sounds great. So, Tom, uh, we just have a, a minute or so left. Can you tell our listeners the best way to get the book and to get in touch with you personally? Sure. Intuitivewebsites.com is the website. Uh, there's also a, a website for the book, winningthewebsitewar.com. But the book's available um, pretty much everywhere, of course, Amazon and Kindle and all that. Uh, I'd be happy to talk to any of your listeners and, and even start the discussion with a quick overview of what they're currently doing. And if there's an opportunity, we'd be, love to help them. If, if not, maybe just give them a few pointers. And our website's also loaded with content as well. And there's dozens of podcasts and, and lots and lots of stuff on there. Okay, so it's a great website to visit to get ideas. Again, uh, look for the book uh, "Winning the Website War" to learn about the four steps in their uh, four four great steps in their process. And you can even call and and talk to Tom and just you know talk about your site and what your needs might be. So, Tom uh, Tom Young, thanks very much for joining us. Great uh, interview. Great. Uh, tips for our listeners and I really appreciate you coming on board and hopefully we, you know let's let's uh, make an appointment to uh, talk again in the next three months or so and just give us an update on what's going on because this is an ever-changing environment it is and we can also dive more into this idea of content marketing that we touched on a little bit which is really the, the key to success online these days and it was a pleasure to be here thank you thanks so much Tom we're going to take a short break we'll be right back after this so please stay with us